the following is a special presentation of ABC Sports. We introduced her to you 15 years ago. Wow! We followed her to Montreal in 1976 for the first perfect 10 in Olympic history. Nadia Comaneci had changed the sport forever. But behind that stoic face was a troubled soul, one that lived in Ceausescu's Romania. They used my name. I, I didn't work for them. Nikolai Ceausescu, a diabolical dictator who used gold medalists for propaganda. Nadia was about on the edge of desperation. I must be free. I need to be free. Five months ago, Nadia left everything behind. News of her escape was made public. There were death threats. There's no doubt on my mind. They wanted her dead or alive. She emerged at Kennedy Airport with the man who helped her escape, Konstantin Panit, a Romanian refugee who's married with four children. We wanted a Cinderella story. What we got was no fairy tale. I didn't care if it's married or unmarried. Just, I go because he had me to go out. Today, in an exclusive interview with Bart Connor, Nadia Comaneci tells her own story. And she'll perform for the first time in nearly a decade in the United States in a special gymnastics exhibition from Reno, Nevada. Join us as we unravel the mystery and magic of Nadia. Spanning the globe to bring you the constant variety of sport, the thrill of victory, and the agony of defeat. In our 30th year, this is ABC's Wide World of Sports. When we first met Nadia Comaneci at the Montreal Olympics in 1976, many of us didn't even know how to pronounce her name. But now, Nadia's name is known throughout the entire world for her perfection in sport, and more recently for her dramatic and controversial escape from her homeland, Romania. Now, for a compelling story, here's Donna De Verona and Bart Connor. ABC's Wide World of Sports is in Reno, Nevada for a very special gymnastics exhibition. Hello, I'm Donna De Verona, and gymnasts from all over the country have come here to welcome Nadia Comaneci back into her sport. For the first time in almost a decade, she'll perform here. Also here is her coach, Bella Caroli. She hasn't seen him since the 1984 Olympics. And in an exclusive interview with Bart Connor, she'll tell us about her life in Romania, her decision to leave the Ceausescu communist dictator dictatorship and her first five controversial months here. Join us for the magic and the mystery of Nadia, but first a look back at the youngest and greatest gymnast of her time. It could have been a fairy tale. A young farm girl, the age of a child ready to enter kindergarten, is discovered by an aspiring coach and in eight dedicated years becomes the sports world's youngest sensation and her country's most well-known citizen. Bella Caroli, the relentless master, Nadia, the most obedient student, worked hard to produce nine Olympic medals, five of them gold in two Olympics. Known as the gym machine, winning was survival in the Romania we're just beginning to know. ABC was there when Nadia first made history. Remember? Right to a handstand. Oh, look at that amplitude. Ooh. She is really moving well. Another handstand. Look at that. Right to the handstand. Gorgeous routine. Beautiful. And the crowd loved it. Nadia Comaneci of Romania. My mother told me that she cried when she looked at the... She didn't like to look, you know. She stayed at the back with the back. And all the time, she asked my, the, my brother, is she fault? Is she fault? <laughs> no. <laughs> The sport was not ready for Nadia's excellence. Even the scoreboard did not have the capacity to display the magic number of 10. But it was a 10, and one of seven perfect scores she would achieve in Montreal. 
gymnastics in Romania became synonymous. After Montreal, Nadia returned to Romania, an international heroine. And it's no secret that in Iron Curtain countries, politics and sport were hand in glove. Ceausescu made Nadia his first goodwill ambassador of sport. And often she'd have to appear with his son Nico at official party functions. Winning had made her proud, but also prisoner of the whim and will of the state. She was awarded the Hero of the Communist Labor Party Medal by the now deposed and much despised dictator Nikolai Ceausescu. His son Nico was president of the Youth Communist Party and was made responsible for Nadia's political agenda. Often she was forced to choose official party functions over training, but many suggest Nadia's ties with the Ceausescu's were more than just official. I saw Ceausescu just once in my, my life. After the Olympic Games, when I received the uh, labor, the, you know, the hero of the communist labor, this was the only time I saw in my life Ceausescu. And uh, the president of the Youth Communist Party was uh, the son of Ceausescu, and he was, I mean, like a boss for me. But I, I didn't have nothing to do with this, because I, I was a gymnast. A lot of people have talked about the fact that uh, you and Nico were seen many times together and that you had a love relationship. Is that true? <laughs> it's crazy questions. Why, uh, why do these rumors get started? Because I'm famous, probably. If I was like nobody, nobody would know right nothing about me. You enjoyed somewhat of a privileged life. You were a celebrated hero. Uh, what kinds of things went along with uh, with that celebration of you and, and, and the privileged life? I, I didn't have a privileged life. My life in Romania was, I will tell you, I buy a, a house with my mother and my brother. And uh, this house I, I paid uh, with uh, the money that I won from 10 years in gymnastics. I didn't have uh, money enough to pay all the house. I must pay more. That's why we stay all together, because we didn't have enough money to pay the bills for the house. So I didn't have a privileged life. Were you treated unfairly? Have you been misunderstood all along? I wanted to prove, because I can't be judged uh, uh, by the people after they, they read something in the newspaper, because it's not me. I will prove myself. Coming up next, Nadia performs in the United States for the first time in almost a decade. When do we first know what we want to be? what we want to do with our lives. Nadia knew at six. And at 14, her genius inspired thousands. Today in Reno, some of America's best gymnasts have come here to welcome Nadia back to her sport and to recreate the past. Bella Caroli protege demonstrating the routine that made Nadia famous. a routine even Nadia at 28 years of age remembers as if it were only yesterday
Nadia is now living in the place of her greatest achievement, Montreal. No longer associated with Constantine Panit, the man who helped her escape but caused much controversy, she's reaching out for her friends in gymnastics. In Reno, Nevada, a warm welcome for Nadia. For years, Nadia's stoic presence belied the personal and political turmoil of her life in communist Romania. Coming up next, the reasons why she fled her country. I, all the time I'm thinking, I must, I must be free, I need to be free because this will help me a lot. Just two years after the Olympics, it was obvious Nadia could no longer hold on to her childhood. At 16, a maturing womanly body and dictator Ceausescu's demands were her biggest enemies. The 1978 World Championships were a shattering experience. Oh, 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 that completely knocks her out. We spoke earlier of the changing of the guard. It looks like it most certainly has happened. Nadia Comaneci completely coming apart on the uneven bars where she thrilled the world in Montreal. Caught in a battle of wills, Coach Bella Caroli wanted her in the gym, Ceausescu for political appearances, Nadia lost everything. Her confidence, her coach, they were separated after the Montreal Games, and her international standing. Finally, determined to get Bella back in her life, she took a dangerous step. It was the only choice she felt she had. It was rumored that uh, you had tried to commit suicide. Uh, can you tell me about that? Uh, Yes, because uh, when I when they moved me and they changed me the the coach, I I didn't like uh, there the Bucharest and uh, I didn't have nobody to talk about this, and uh, I wanted just to attract the attention to the people to to know that is something something is not good. What's happened is not good for me, and uh, I, I take some, some shampoo, not just not only f not for suicide, just to, to attract the attention. What did you drink? Shampoo. Shampoo. Yes. Like for your hair. Yes. You drank shampoo. Yes, a little. I wanted. To, I. You, you can't die if you drink shampoo. <laughs> you know. Nadia's defiant will finally won out. Ceausescu realized that Nadia without Bella meant no more gold. I know Nadia very well. She's not a type of person who will go commit suicide, period. She's not a desperate person. She's not a, a, a retarded person, you know, who said, oh, that's my life and that's over. No. I believe she wanted to make a statement. She wanted to show to those guys, you know, that's it. Let me alone. Let me get out from here. I can't stand that anymore. I knew that the only person who will help me is Bella. That's why I tried to find him and to talk with him and to ask, do you think if I will start I will become again a champion. Together again, Bella and Nadia worked their magic. In 1979, Nadia was back on top, winning two golds during the World Cup in Tokyo. And then, during the Moscow Olympic Games, she captured two more golds. She proved she was the best as a little girl and as a woman. In 1984, she gave her farewell performance in Bucharest, but her most endearing moment came when she tearfully said goodbye to her sport. Finally, the world had seen a little vulnerability. Retiring for any athlete is a kind of death. For Nadia, it was the end of a life she loved. It's almost a decade since Nadia has taken center stage in the United States. Those that have been touched by her are here in Reno to stand by her. When the night has come and the land is dark and the moon is the only light.
And that's a mature Christy Phillips, the 1986 American Cup champion, who was also coached by Bella Caroli. The 1984 Olympic champion, Bart Connor. Should tumble and fall, or the mountain should crumble to the sea. I won't cry, I won't cry, no, I won't shed a tear just as long as you stand, stand by. in international sports often transcend time, politics, and border guards. Nadia and Bart have been friends since they first met during the 1976 American Cup gymnastics competition. And Nadia is really enjoying herself. Coming up, Nadia will tell us about her dramatic escape from Ceausescu's Romania. I thought it's a dream, and I would wake up in the morning, I thought, oh, it was a dream. There is no doubt on my mind. They wanted her dead or alive, and uh, I know Nadia. She would never give up, uh, you know, her uh, freedom uh, easy. And we'll talk about the controversy surrounding her arrival in the United States. ABC's Wide World of Sports continues with the mystery and magic of Nadia. Hello, I'm Donna Deverona. We're back in Reno, Nevada for a very special gymnastics exhibition to welcome Nadia Komenich back into her sport. The journey to this stage has been a treacherous one. It was five months ago in the midst of political turmoil in Eastern Europe and her country that she decided and had the chance to flee to the West. She left the Ceausescu regime, a country in a place much like that one depicted in George Orwell's book, 1984. She decided she just couldn't live in her country anymore. The 1984 Olympic Games were the last time Nadia Comaneci was allowed to travel to the West. Former dictator Nikolai Ceausescu went against the Soviet-backed boycott in hopes of continuing favored nation status with the United States. Romanian athletes were told that if they tried to defect, the U.S. government would turn them back. When Nadia said farewell to the United States, she thought it would be forever. Back home, she became technical coach of the junior team. In 1986, ABC visited her as she was preparing gymnasts for international trips that she was not allowed to take. Frustrated with punitive and restrictive policies, Nadia gave up coaching as a silent protest. Five months ago, she and her brother plotted her escape. Out of desperation, Nadia came here to the railway station in Bucharest. And early on the morning of November 26, she boarded the train with her brother, his wife, and a complete stranger she met six days before, Konstantin Benit, an alleged border runner who reportedly charged Romanian citizens money to leave the country. 
Nadia had no money, but her future held financial promise. The train was headed for Timisoara. It was an eight-hour, 350-mile journey to a destination that would only weeks later spark a revolution. An upheaval that made Nadia's departure seem untimely, but in the end may have saved her brother's life. Once in Timisoara, Konstantin Panit, a Romanian immigre and now a U.S. citizen, helped drive Nadia and six others to a border town near Hungary. All this person who was with me when we were seven, uh, work in the middle of the night, six hours, uh, dangers, snow, ice, and uh, mines, you know. Mines, landmines? Yes. And uh, it was very hard. It must have been very scary. Yeah, you know, but you cannot understand. It's, it's not a movie. I mean, if you do, if you do a movie, you... Okay, I, it's something wrong. Let's shoot again. It's not like a movie. You have just one chance. Once in Hungary, news of Nadia's escape was made public. Two suspenseful days later, she sought asylum at the U.S. Embassy in Vienna and made her way to New York. The world was ready for Nadia, but no one knew how to deal with Constantine. Because I am here in America and I wanted from long time to come here. But I didn't have somebody to help me. This is my friend who helped me to come here. What had the makings of a fairy tale soon became a nightmare. The people want to celebrate you. Um, they wanted the Cinderella story. Here's Nadia Comaneci coming to freedom. And yet there was a little scandal right at the beginning. Um, were you worried that uh, you were giving the wrong impression when you first came to the United States? Uh, yes, I was worried because I wasn't used with the, the negative press. Because all the time the press wrote a, a good things about me. And I'm a good person. I didn't like that. but. Uh, wasn't my fault. Probably if I offended somebody from some people, I, I apologize. It wasn't my fault. Tell me about your relationship with Constantine. He obviously helped you out of the country. Did he decide on his own that he would be your manager when you came here? He decided himself to be my manager. What did you think? You know, I, when I escaped, when I defected from Romania, I came with nothing. I couldn't do something to survive. And I didn't know nobody. I didn't know what, what really my rights are in the free country, because it's happened to all the, the people who, who escaped from the communist country. They don't know what means free. You all the time have the, uh, the sensation that will come somebody to send you back to, to your communist country. That I didn't know I was like this, you know. You had friends here, though. Uh, you, did you think about calling Bella Caroli or the Gymnastics Federation? Oh, I had in my mind, but I couldn't call because I didn't have the access to call and to answer at the, at the call. The you access? know, tell, go. Me, tell us about no, this. No, I, I didn't answer. I didn't have the access to answer at the phone. Because Constantine answered it? He answered all, he made, he made all the deals. One of the first deals he made was to sell an interview that you gave to a London newspaper for cash. Um, this got out in the media and, and gave a very bad impression at the beginning. Did, were you aware of people were thinking you as greedy and coming to America only to make money? No, I didn't come. I was mad because they thought that I come here for make money. I, I, I wanted my image, my real image. I don't need money for this. You, you know, I, I like that my image to be a good one, to, to sh sh show to the people my, the, the real Nadia, which I am. It's more important to be, to be loved than that the money. That's why I wasn't interested in money. Immediately, you were asked about questions about your relationship with Constantine. Many people took it as to believe that uh, when you were asked, were you concerned whether he was married or not, you said, so what? <sighs> yes, I know I said so what, but I want to explain that I, 
escape. He helped me to ex escape. It's, I don't care if he's married or not married, if he has children, because I, I am free now. And I'm not interested in what, what's his life, because he will have his life. And that's why I said, so what? I'm not interested in your question. You didn't really deny that you two were uh, involved in a relationship. Because I, I told you, I, I, I wasn't uh, safe, you know. If I was in, in the States, but I didn't know what to do. I needed somebody to, I waited to tell me, you are free, you can do wherever you want. But nobody told me, nothing. Did you realize that the American people um, were saying bad things about you because of this relationship? They were, t they were saying that you had a sleazy image now. Did you realize that? Yes, I know. How but did that make you feel? That made me feel very bad. It's because it's not true. Now, what can I say? I'm happy because he's back of his family, of his wife. And I am really free now. ABC Sports has made numerous efforts to contact Constantine Panit. He's been unreachable. As peaceful revolution swept through Eastern Europe, Romania's became the bloodiest. Its dictator, Nicolae Ceausescu, a symbol of hate for those who had endured a lifetime of control and deception, was tried and executed with his wife on Christmas Day. Son Miku is in prison. Once a children's playground in the heart of Bucharest, this is now a resting place for the young heroes of the revolution. As Nadia watched the events unfold from the United States, she must have wondered what had happened to the family she left behind. But the revolution, I was very afraid because uh, I even spoke with them because they, the security they, uh, cut the telephone from my brother and my mother. And uh, I was afraid because I didn't know what's happened, what was happening with them. But if they was killed, I, my God, I, I didn't know. They are now safe and secure in Nadia's home. But for a while before the revolution, the secret police threatened to put Nadia's grandmother, her brother Adrian, and his wife out in the street. After Nadia defected, the Securitate stormed her home and sealed up her trophy room. They'd intended to cart her winnings away, but history intervened. Nadia's brother had encouraged her defection. He and his wife were willing to pay the price. Three days after Nadia left, four or five men came to the door. They had come in a van. They took my wife and I to the militia and questioned us. Me in one room, my wife in another. We were questioned for two weeks, 10 to 12 hours a day, statement after statement. They did not beat us up, but they mentally harassed us. My wife was pregnant and she lost the baby. It was literally nervous shock. In Romania, fear was a constant companion. Revolution brought change, yet Nadia is still afraid to go home. I told my mother, what do you think that if I will go to Romania to visit? And my mother told me, you know, I think that it's better for you to, to stay there where you are. It's not the, the, the right time to come in Romania because all the things is not clear. And we, we are afraid to go on the street. What about you? That, that's why I want, don't want to go. Now, of course, you're here in America and you're watching television and you see the picture of the Ceausescu's dead. They've been shot. What did you think? <laughs> First of all, I, I didn't realize that it's him. Why not? Because I thought it's another one with the same face. And <laughs> the second was that I, I told to everybody that the best picture that i ever seen in my life.
cannot diminish Nadia's accomplishments, and in a way for many of us, her defection helped personalize the political turmoil in Eastern Europe. As she fled for the United States, we remembered that young girl from Montreal. When she arrived, she was a grown woman and a product of her state, a place in which telling untruths easily is a matter of survival. She was elusive and full of contradictions. She'd been able to escape from the Ceausescu's, but she couldn't run away from her past. It had been a lifetime of control, in the gym by her coach, in her life by the state, and in the end by the very man who helped her run away. Nadia has paid a heavy price for her freedom. Now that she has it, perhaps only the truth will really set her free. If you could rewrite some stages of your life, what things would you do differently now? Do you have any regrets? Regrets for what? For things I mean, you've done in the past. The past is gone. The future will come. Coming up, a reunion between Nadia and her coach, Bella Caroli. They haven't seen each other since 1984. There's been a lot of controversy surrounding Nadia Comaneci and her new life in America. And the mystery and magic of Nadia has given us the opportunity to hear from her firsthand. ABC Sports was delighted to pay a rights fee for the gymnastics exhibition in Reno and equally delighted that Nadia chose to tell us her side of the story. In a minute, we'll have Nadia's touching reunion with her Olympic coach, Bella Caroli. And earlier today, another touching reunion took place when Nadia's brother, Adrian, and wife, Patika, who are here on a 30-day visitor's visa, met up with Nadia at the Los Angeles International Airport. It was obviously a heartfelt moment for Nadia. Right now, let's rejoin Donna Deverona and Bart Connor for the conclusion of the mystery and magic of Nadia. The Bella Caroli Nadia Comaneci partnership made Romania synonymous with gymnastics. Nadia's up and down career helped us understand the significance of the bond that often exists between a young athlete and her coach, the trust that must be established in a sport full of so much risk. I needed to, to, to look at his eyes. What is it about Bella and his eyes that, uh, that make you strong? Uh, to trust yourself. It was a magic. Uh, through the years, or so many years, with different athletes uh, under my hand and uh, under my direction, I never got back the, the same feeling. Bella was Nadia's mentor for 13 years. In 1981, he defected, and it was devastating for Nadia and her teammates. The last time they saw each other was during the 1984 Olympic Games in Los Angeles. Bella remembers. Long time ago. Long, long time ago. That was a few words what we could change in 84 when she was surrounded by all Romanian delegation. I don't know how many security guys, but, but I know uh, even Danico was around and uh, we met each other on the walkways in uh, close by the Pauli Pavilion. And I said, Nadia, and I opened my arm and she was very reserved and, uh, and I said, gosh, well, it's a different word. We cannot talk freely. Of course we cannot really. And I backed up. I didn't want to hurt her. I didn't want to, talk, to make her any harm. That was, that was painful. He's my coach. He's my friend. I, I wait the chance to meet him, to talk with him. That would, be, that would be what I'm waiting for such a long time. And I would see her a free person. So I was the one with all the Now a tribute to Bella Caroli by some of his former students.
And now, ladies and gentlemen, for the first time in five years, two people whose brilliance together gave us the first perfect 10 and changed gymnastics forever. Nadia Comaneci and Bella Caroli. <laughs> it's unbelievable. <laughs> it's unbelievable. Thank you. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> nice to be back together. Oh, I can't believe it. What are you thinking now? I don't know what to say. <laughs> Bella, you always have something to say. I know. It's a dream. Finally, a dream came true. It's a long dream. Ten long years. But now we're getting together. Thank for you. I love you. I love you too. Well, all of your friends. Stay tuned for your local news and world news Saturday over most of these ABC stations. ABC's Wide World of Sports has been brought to you by the Upjohn Company. If you're concerned about hair loss, see your doctor. By the U.S. Army, be all you can be. By Meineke Discount Muffler Shops, it's smart to come to Meineke with all your exhaust and brake service needs. And by Rain Dance Car Wax for protection that lasts and lasts. This has been a presentation of ABC Sports, recognized around the world as the leader in sports television.